jQuery is really cool and mysterious in how it all works, and in order to understand exactly how jQuery works, we're going to build out our own version of jQuery that can run all of this code right here. Before we get started, I want to take a quick moment to share something that's really important to me. Did you know I almost didn't become a programmer? It's not because I didn't want to be a programmer, it's because I didn't even know programming was an option. Across the three different high schools that I went to, not a single one of them offered programming as an option. I didn't even know what programming was until luckily my senior year of high school, I happened to stumble upon programming and from there it drastically changed my life. I changed my career field, I changed my job, and now I'm sitting here teaching you web development because of my love for programming, and if I hadn't had that lucky break and stumbled upon it, I would have never learned coding at all. And this is a problem so many people face because more than half of the schools in the US don't even teach programming at all. On a global scale, things aren't even any better. But luckily, today's video sponsor, Dot Tech Domains, along with Namecheap, are taking 100% of all the proceeds they make for Dot Tech Domains, and they're donating them to Code.org. And Code.org is a company who's taking computer science and teaching it to students that wouldn't normally have access to this, and I love that. So the fact that Dot Tech Domains, along with Namecheap, are taking 100% of their proceeds until July 5th this year and donating them to Code.org is incredible. So if you want to support this cause, use the URL go.tech/webdev. It's going to be linked down in the description below, and get a Dot Tech domain, and they're going to donate 100% of those proceeds to Code.org. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now to get started with this video, I'm going to be using some code from a Brad Traversy tutorial on how to make this image component over here, this image gallery. And I've modified the code pretty heavily to make sure we use lots of jQuery features. I've also included this whole Ajax section at the bottom so we can really dive into all the more complex features of jQuery, such as how ready works, different types of event selectors, and just a bunch of miscellaneous random functions. Now our goal with this is to understand how jQuery works and to build out our own version of jQuery. So to do that, we're just going to create a brand new file. I'm just going to call it jQuery_clone.js, and inside our index.html, I'm going to make sure I include that script, which has a source of jQuery_clone.js, and this is going to come right below our current jQuery. So if I just comment this current jQuery out and I save, we're going to of course have a bunch of errors. If I inspect this with our console, you can see uncaught reference dollar sign is not defined. So now we need to define our own dollar sign variable. So inside of our jQuery clone, let's create a function. We're going to call it dollar sign. And this is going to be our jQuery function. And as you can see in our main.js, we're calling this with like our document, for example, or we're calling it with a selector such as dot previous here. Now in jQuery, there's essentially two different ways to call this dollar sign function. You either pass it an element such as document or window, or you're going to pass it a selector and it's going to get all the elements that match that selector. So we're going to pass it in some type of param. And this parameter is either going to be a string or it's going to be an element. So if the type of our param is equal to string, or if our param is an instance of the string object, then we know that it's a string. There's just two different ways to create strings in JavaScript, so we're checking for both of them. So if either of these are true, then we know we have a string selector. So we want to get all of the elements that match that string selector. So we can just come in here with a document dot query selector. Oops. Query selector, and we want to query selector all things that match that param, since this is our selector. This is going to get us all of the elements. Otherwise, what we can do is we know that our param is the actual element we want, so we're just going to return this as an array. Because in jQuery, essentially the return of calling this dollar sign function is a special type of array. It's an array that has a bunch of other features built in on top of it that allow you to do things like dot ready or dot on and so on. So we're actually going to create a class that allows us to encapsulate that array functionality. In this class, we're just going to call it an element collection. And this is going to extend the array class because like I said, this is pretty much just like a normal array, but with some extra fancy stuff built in on top of it. So here, what we can do is we can return a new element collection and we just need to pass it in to that element collection. We want to spread this information out into our element collection. That way when we call it, it's going to give us a brand new array essentially with all of these elements inside of it. Down here, we want to do the same thing. We're going to return a new element collection and we're just going to pass in the param as our only element because we just have a one element array. So now if we just come into our main here and we just call dollar sign and we pass it something like document and we just do a quick console.log and we save this and inspect over here and we look inside of our console, you'll see it prints out that element collection and has one item inside of it. 
So we now essentially have a custom array that we can add additional features to. And right now we have one that has a document. Or if we pass in a string, for example, we pass in div here, and I do that same inspect. Now you can see that this element collection has nothing. The reason for that is so far on our page, the divs haven't loaded yet because we aren't waiting for the ready to finish. So what we need to do is set up this document.ready function so then we can put this console log inside of the ready. So that way, whenever our code is ready and all of our stuff is loaded, then we'll log out the divs that we have. So let's actually create that ready function. We just come up inside of here. We need to create a function called ready. And this function is just going to have a callback inside of it that gets called when we're ready. Now, normally when you're checking for ready, what you would want to do is you want to take the document and you want to get the ready state and you want to make sure it's not equal to loading. This means that we are currently ready. So if this is true, then we're just going to call the callback because everything is already loaded. Otherwise, we're going to set up an event listener and that would be on our document. And we just want to say add event listener and this is on DOM content loaded. And again, we're just going to use our callback. And this gets called whenever our page is finished loading. So if our page is already loaded, we call our callback for ready. Otherwise, we wait until it's done loading. But the important thing to note here is that we want to call dot ready on whatever we pass in. Right now, we're passing in this document. And this is where we have to take into account the fact we're dealing with an array of elements. So I want to get an is ready variable to determine if we're ready. And right now, this is equal to an array. So what we want to do is check to see if we're done loading. So some of the elements in our array match this selector then we know that we're ready. And inside this selector, all we're going to do is say e.readyState is equal to null. So we want to check to make sure this is not equal to null. So we have some type of ready state. And we want to make sure that our e.readyState is equal to, or sorry, not equal to loading. Let me just make sure I spell this correct. So all we're doing with this simple selection of code here is we're taking this code right here and we're moving it into our array syntax. So we have an array of elements and we want to check all of our elements. And if any of them have a ready state that's not null and not loading, then we're going to say we are ready. So down here, we're going to say is ready. And then we're going to call this callback. Otherwise, we want to set up an event listener for every single one of the elements that we have. So what I want to do is just set up a new function called on. And this is going to be how we set up an event listener. And the reason I'm calling this on is because as you can see in jQuery, we use this on function to set up event listeners. So I'm just going to use this on inside of our ready function since we have it built in. And what this is going to do is it's going to take in the event that we want to do. And it's going to take in a callback, just like you can see us using right here. We have on with the event and then the callback. We can just say this dot for each. And for each element, what we want to do is set up an event listener. So we're going to say add event listener. This is going to be for our event and it's going to use our callback. That's all this is going to do, just set up a bunch of event listeners. Then in here, we can just say this dot on DOM content loaded. We can call that callback function. And we don't need this anymore. So now if we break this down, essentially all we've done is we've made this ready function work with the array thing that we're working with. Right now we have an element collection, which is an array of different elements. In our example here, this ready is just one single element, but it could be multiple elements and we're taking all of that into account. So now this ready should hopefully work. And if I save and I inspect over here, go to console, you can see we're getting some errors, but our element collection is now properly printing out the three divs on our screen. And now we have other things such as, you know, failing to execute add event listener and this dollar sign get not being defined. But that does mean that all the code inside of our ready function here is running, which is perfect. That's what we want. So now the next thing that we want to look at here is going to be for this dollar sign on. As you can see, we have two different ways we're defining these on event listeners. And the reason is, is because in jQuery, there's two different ways to create an event listener. The first way is going to be the standard way where you pass it in the name of the event and a function, and you put it on all the things that came before it. We've already essentially done this code. But the other way is if you want to have a global event listener. So you're going to put an event listener on the document for click, and it'll only execute for things that match this dot next selector. So in order to accommodate this, we need to be able to account for two parameters or three parameters in our on function. So if we pass in two parameters, then we know it's just going to be a callback here. But if we pass in three parameters, then this is actually going to be a selector. So this is going to be a callback or a selector. And this final third parameter is always going to be a callback. Then what we can do is we can just determine if the type of our callback or selector is equal to a function. Well, then that means that we're using the two parameter version of this function because we're passing in a function as our second parameter. So what we need to do is just do the code that we've already written right here. And instead of calling our callback, we want to call this callback or selector. So this is going to handle the two parameter version. Otherwise, if we have three parameters, well, we need to set up essentially a global event listener. So we're going to say this dot for each 
and we need to set up the event listener. So inside of here, we're just going to say e dot add event listener, and this add event listener is going to take in an event, and it's going to give us this e value. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to rename this to elem because this is an element, and then we're going to have our e for our event inside of here, so we don't get confused which one is which. But then what I want to do is I want to see if our e dot target dot matches our selector, which is our callback or selector, then I'm gonna call our callback with that event. So all that this does is set up a global event listener. So when we click on something, let's say we click on somewhere in the document, we click on this button right here, what it's going to do is it's gonna call this because it's inside the document, and it's gonna give us an e target, which is the thing we click on. And if our target matches the selector we passed in, then we're gonna call our callback function. So this essentially accounts for both of the different types of ways that we can set up our on event listeners. And if we inspect our page, we should hopefully have no more errors on that section. And as you can see, the only error we get is due to Ajax. For this Ajax, I'm just going to comment this out for now so we don't have any of those errors showing up. But now, if I inspect our page, we have no more errors. So let's actually see if our page is working. Let me just minimize this over. We click the previous button. It's going to give us an uncaught error for dot previous is not a function. And if we click next, we get the same thing, dot next is not a function. So the next thing we need to work on is obviously getting dot next to be a function that we can call on our jQuery collection. So instead of our collection here, we have ready, we have on. Well, let's work on next. And we also need to work on previous. They're going to be very similar. What next does is it's just going to get us the next element, essentially the next sibling element that we have. And it's going to do that for every single thing in our collection. So what we can do is we can say this dot map. I want to map over all of the elements in our collection and return a new element. And that new element is just going to be our sibling. So we can say e dot next element sibling. And that's just going to get us the next element in line. But this could return to us null or undefined if there's no more siblings left. So I want to make sure I do a quick filter here. And I want to filter for only things that are not equal to null. So if there's any siblings that don't exist, it's just going to remove them from here. And then we can return this. And what this does is it's going to return to us a brand new element collection since we're doing our map. And the things inside that collection are just going to be the next sibling. So we're just essentially calling next on every single element in our array. And then we're just going to filter out the ones that don't have next siblings. Now for previous, we're going to do almost exactly the same thing, but this is going to be called previous element sibling instead of next. And now hopefully if we inspect our code and we go over to our console and we click next, we're going to notice we now get a different error. And it's saying that the current image.remove class is not a function. So if we go to our code, we're so far passing this line, this line is passing, this line is passing. And now the problem that we're getting into is this remove class down here, this .css, and this add class are functions that don't actually exist in this jQuery instance. So what's add remove class and add class? We can come in here, remove class, and we're going to take in a class name. And this remove class is super simple. We're just going to say this dot for each one of our elements. We just want to take our class list, and we want to remove that class name. Super straightforward. We're just doing it for everything in our list. And we're going to do the exact same thing for add class, but here we're going to add that class name in. That should be all that we need to do. And now if we inspect, we should hopefully get more errors. So let's just try to see if this works. We can click next here. And of course we're getting uncaught type error cannot read property CSS of undefined. So let's see what's going on. In our main.js, we have our current image.remove class, which is working just fine. But then we're calling .css on the return of remove class. And that's something that's key about jQuery. The nice thing about jQuery is you can chain together as many function calls as you want. jQuery always returns itself whenever you call a function on it. So what we need to make sure we do is whenever we call any of these functions, we need to make sure we return ourselves. So for example, in remove class, we need to make sure that we return this. We're returning ourselves. That way we can chain these together. Same thing in previous, we're already returning something that's good. Next, we're returning something inside of on at the bottom. We want to return ourselves again. Make sure that we're always returning this. And we'll just come in here, return this. And that way we can chain these together so much better. Now we're still going to get an error if we inspect, but now our error is saying that you know, remove class.css is not a function. So we're calling .css on our element collection now because we're returning this instead of returning nothing, which is making it so that when we called CSS, we were calling it on undefined. So the way CSS works inside of jQuery is you pass it the name of the CSS selector and the value, and it's going to override that value for you. So let's come in here, minimize these down, and add in that CSS class, which is going to take in a selector and a value. And this is actually a property, not a selector. Now to set a style inside of JavaScript, you could say, you know, like document.body.style, 
and then we say dot and whatever we could say, you know, dot width or dot font size. And the thing you'll notice is we have a camel case version of the actual property. And here we would just set it to our value, for example. So we could say like two REM like this. This is how we would set a CSS value inside of JavaScript. But the jQuery version has the normal CSS font size, as you can see, Z dash index instead of font capital size, it would say Z capital index is what we need. So we need to convert from the version that we have inside of jQuery here, which is the hyphen version to the camel case version, which has these capital letters. So we can just say camel prop is going to be equal to and we're going to take our property. And what I want to do is I want to replace all of the dashes with a capital letter coming afterwards. So we can use a regular expression for this. And we can essentially wrap this in parentheses to make sure we want to capture this. And we're saying anytime we have a dash, and it's followed by any letter from A to Z, then what we want to do is select that. So we're going to select the dash as well as the next letter that comes after it. Then what we want to do is run a function on each one of these groups. So for each group, what we want to do is we just want to return g dot replace, and I want to replace the hyphen here with nothing. So I'm just going to remove the hyphen, and then I want to make it an uppercase string. So I'll say to uppercase. What this is going to do is it's going to remove all the hyphens, and it's going to take the character that follows the hyphen and convert it to uppercase. That's going to give us a camel prop, which we can use here for our style. Instead of having it say Z dash index, it'll say Z capital index. So now what we can do is we can just do our normal this dot for each. For each one of these, what we want to do is get our style for that camel prop. And then we want to set it equal to the value that we pass in. And then of course, just like everything else, we want to return this at the end. Now, if we come over here and we click the next button, you can see we can actually move forward inside of this slider and we can move backwards. So this is actually working entirely. We have no more errors. So all of the code inside of this section and inside of this section is taken care of with this jQuery clone. And before we move on to this Ajax section down here, I first kind of want to recap what we've done. Essentially, all we did is we just converted the jQuery stuff here for our string or our elements and we converted it to a fancy array, essentially our own custom array. And we added a bunch of functions onto this array for all the different things we can do in jQuery. Now there's a ton more functionality jQuery has, but it's pretty easy to add new functionality if you want. It would be a boring video if I added every function in jQuery into this element collection here. But you can add as many as you want. The real key thing to note though, is we made sure we always returned ourselves. That way we could constantly chain these methods together as much as we wanted to. You know, we could call remove class, then add class, then CSS, then we could call previous and then something else. This is the real power of making sure we return this so that way we can actually do all of that different chaining. Now the next thing that we're going to work on is this jQuery section down here. And you're going to know something interesting. We're using the same dollar sign, but we're actually calling a function on dollar sign. In order to set that up, what we need to do is we need to take our dollar sign variable and we need to define a function in our case dot get. We're going to set it equal to a function here, which is going to take in some options. So these options are going to be a URL. We're also going to take in some data, which is just going to be an empty object by default. We're going to take in a success and this success is just a function. And by default, we don't want our success function to do anything. So we're just going to have an empty function by default that does absolutely nothing. And then finally, we have a data type is the last thing that we can pass in as an option. And then inside this function, we need to do all of our code to essentially make an asynchronous Ajax request to a server with this URL, given this data and with this success function and this data type. Now, luckily, this is pretty easy to do because we have the fetch function inside of the browser. So we can say that we want to fetch our URL, but we want to make sure we take our data and add it to the end of our URL because this is a get request. So I want to say that we're going to get our query string and our query string is just going to be equal to taking our object dot entries from our data. Just like this. So what this is going to do is return an array that has key and value pairs for all of the data inside of here. I want to map over each one of those. So we're going to have a key and a value for our object. And all I'd want to do is just return a new string. And this new string is just going to have our key at the beginning equal and our value afterwards. And this is essentially how a query string would look inside of the browser. The only thing left to do is make sure we join these on the ampersand. So now if we passed in data that looks something like this, where we said X is one and B is two, we would get something that looks like this in our result, we get X equals one and B equals two. This is converting to a query string that we can use inside of the browser. So now I can take our URL like this, I can put the question mark to say that we have all of our query string params, and I can put our query string afterwards. This is going to take all of our data and our URL and combine them together. And since we're doing a get request, let's just make sure our method here is set to get just like that. 
Now the final thing to do is to incorporate this data type. So we're just gonna say that we're gonna have our headers and our headers is equal to content type. And our content type is going to be that data type. So whatever data type we want, we're passing in as our content type. Now finally, I need to convert this to the proper data. So we can just say dot then. We're gonna have a response. And inside this response, we're just gonna say that we want to convert this to JSON. We're gonna say return res.json. And then what we wanna do inside of here with our data is just call that success function with our data. Now this for the most part will get us pretty much all that we need for our git function. If we come over here, you can see we called git, pass it our URL, our success, and so on. And if we inspect our page over here, we'll actually get the information being printed out. As you can see, it says first success, and it has the object that we queried from that URL. So that means that our success callback here worked just fine. But you'll notice we also can pass in a done property, which is like a second success that we can do. We can pass in a fail, which will catch all of the errors, and an always, which is gonna run no matter if we have a failure or if we have a success. So we need to make sure we can add different functionality onto this promise after it runs. So in order to do that, we're gonna again use another special class. So we can just have a class here. We're gonna call this Ajax promise. And this class is gonna have a constructor which takes in our promise. So this dot promise is equal to our promise. That's all that Ajax promise is. And down here, we can return a new Ajax promise and we can pass it in this fetch function as our promise. Now what we can do is if we go into our Ajax promise, we can set up that done function, which takes in a callback. We can set up that fail function, which takes in a callback. And finally, the last thing that we can do is set up always, which is going to again take in a callback. So for fail, what we wanna do is we wanna take our promise and we wanna add a dot catch to it. And all this dot catch is gonna do is call our callback function. And then for chaining purposes, we're just gonna return this again. So we can chain our always afterwards or our done afterwards if we wanted. Another thing to note is that we wanna make sure we set our promise equal to this promise right here. So we're just taking our current promise, adding a dot catch, and then resaving that as our current promise. Let's do the same thing for always, except for we're just gonna use dot finally here. This runs no matter if it's success or a failure. And then inside of our dot then, we're gonna do a pretty similar thing, but instead of just calling dot then here, what we need to make sure we do is we need to take in our data, we need to call our callback with our data, and then importantly, we need to return our data at the bottom. And the reason that we do this is so that we can chain multiple dot dones together because then we'll always use the same data in our dot then if we chain multiple together or if we just chain one together. Speaking of this though, we also need to do this down here in this success. We need to make sure that we call our success with data and we also return our data so that way we have the exact same data in every future dot done that we call on our promise. So now let's just save this real quick and see if we have any errors. If we inspect our page and we go over to our console, you'll see that everything prints out successfully. It says first success prints out our object, second success prints out our object, and always. And if we go over to our main, you can see first success, second success, and always. But what about that failure case? If we pinch in here a negative one, this is a to-do that doesn't exist, and we inspect our page, we go to our console, you'll notice and we get the error up here saying it couldn't find it, but it's still calling our success. And that's because inside a dot fetch, whenever we have our res here, it doesn't matter if it's a 404 error or what, it's always going to be in our dot then. It's never gonna call dot catch. So we need to say, is res okay? This is essentially saying, is this a successful request? If so, return our JSON. Otherwise, if this is not a successful request, we wanna throw a new error, and this error is just gonna have our res dot status. So now if we don't have a successful response, we're throwing an error and that'll be caught by our failure responses, which are inside of these dot fails. Now if we inspect, we go to our console, you can see it says fail error 404. That's exactly what we're printing inside of here. And then always still gets printed out because no matter if it's a failure or a success, we always print out the always section. And that's a full jQuery clone. It's actually quite crazy how easy it is to create jQuery if you just know and understand JavaScript really well. So I highly recommend if you wanna learn JavaScript in depth to check out my full JavaScript simplified course linked down in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.